Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope that you and your family are having a great Christmas experience. I know that we had a great experience at Victory Hill all day today, and that experience is just getting started. Well, if you joined us at Victory Hill this morning for church, you should have been able to receive some communion elements. And maybe you weren't able to be a part of our service this morning, but if you're watching this, we invite you to join us for communion. You can find the elements right there in your own home, wherever you may be. If you can find some bread or juice or wine, any of those will work as we talk about and as we go through communion and the remembrance of what Jesus did for us. You know, when I think about communion and we think about what it means, it's really just, it's the representation, it's the commemoration of the life that Jesus lived, the death that he went through, and the resurrection that he followed up with to give us eternal life forever. That's really what Christmas is all about. It is about God who loved us so much that he gave his only son by placing him in the Virgin Mary, born in Bethlehem. And we know that while Jesus was born to bring his peace, that that peace would only come as a result of him willingly giving his life that we may live. And so tonight here at Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, we want to do that and invite you to join us in doing that by just remembering the ultimate sacrifice that was made for you and I. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with the 26th verse, reminds us of the words of Jesus. Matter of fact, Paul talks about uh, the event that happened in Luke chapter 22 when Jesus, just hours before his arrest, gathers with his disciples and he gathers with them in the upper room. And the Bible says that as they sat around the table that he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this bread represents my body that will be broken for many, that this bread represents my body that is given willfully. And tonight, as we think about baby Jesus, who was laying in a manger, we think of baby Jesus, and we think about the life that he lived. Let us never forget that those tiny baby hands that were first embraced by Mary, that those tiny hands were destined for a nail, they were destined for a cross. And because of that, let us remember and let us be thankful for the body that was broken for you and I, that we may live forever. Let's bless the bread, and then we'll partake of that together. Father, we are thankful for the body of Jesus that was given to us as a ransom. We're thankful for the body that, Lord, that healed people, that raised people from the dead. We are thankful for the body, God, uh, that was put on a cross willfully, a body that was beaten, that we may live. And tonight, here on Christmas Eve, we remember the body of Jesus. We remember the price that was paid. And we pray, Father, and we thank you for the gift that has given us eternal life. In Christ's name we pray. Bless this bread as we remember. Amen. Let us partake. After that, the Bible says that Jesus took some wine. And he told the disciples, this wine is the New Testament covenant that I'm about to establish, meaning that the blood he was about to shed on a hill called Calvary would be the very element that had to happen in order for the covenant of salvation to be ratified. You see, the Passover is really a picture of the Old Testament. Then in the Old Testament, whenever the Israelites were in Egyptian bondage, the Bible says that, that God commanded Moses to put the blood of the lamb over the door and that whoever had the blood applied to their home, that the death angel could not touch them. The same is true in the New Testament. When Jesus said that the wine represents his blood, giving as redemption, what he's really saying is this, that he came and that he lived his life and he died that excruciating death. He shed his blood so that his blood could be applied not over the door of our house, but over the door of our hearts. Meaning that even though, even though death comes, it can't keep us. The Apostle Paul would later write that the grave has lost its victory and death has lost its sting. And, there, and the reason death can't touch us is because the blood of the Lamb of God has been applied. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian and you call Jesus your Lord, then the blood of Jesus has been applied to your life. 
And tonight on this Christmas Eve, as we think about all the great things God is and what and God is doing in our life, let us never forget the greatest thing of all. And that's that God himself became man. And he gave his body to be broken. And he gave his blood to be shed. And because of that, scripture is clear that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Whoever, believe, whoever believes in Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. His blood is applied to their life and death can touch them no more. Let us pray and bless the drink offering. Father, we are thankful tonight for the blood of Jesus. We are thankful that even as we celebrate the birth of of Jesus Christ, we remember the death, the required death that we might live. And so, Father, tonight we pray and ask that you would bless this drink offering. And Lord, as we drink, we pray that we would remember the ultimate gift, greater than any gift anyone could ever receive, greater than any gift that could ever be given, was the gift of Jesus Christ the Lord, that we may live forever with you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Bless this drink offering. Amen. Let us drink. Well, my hope and prayer is tonight that your Christmas experience really is just getting started. Tomorrow, I hope you're able to wake up, spend time with your family and friends, and really ponder and think about what Christmas is all about. On behalf of me and all of our staff who love you all, we wish you the merriest Christmas of all. And we can't wait to start a brand new year with you in just a couple of weeks. God bless.